I know that's right. I know that's right. So I Hey everybody, hey bookers, welcome back to another video. Yes, we are doing another book recommendation video. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I love, can you check my mic there? It's fine, let's, let's just deal with it. Nah, let's just deal with it. I love to do the bookish videos because I love being out and having you guys come up to me and say, because of you, I read. And just this past weekend, I was out and I saw one of you guys and she was like, yep, I'm reading more because of you. And I'm like, I know that's right. I know that's right. So I saw another book recommendation tag flying around and I liked this one because I thought to myself, okay, this is the one where I'm going to share some of the newer books that I have read and some of the books that I've been liking uh, recently as opposed to books that I've always, always recommended over and over again. Yes, there are some books in this video that are staples for me. I will love them forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, ever amen. But um, there's also some newer ones that maybe I may have not spoken as much about on this channel before, but you may have seen me mention them, but not really dived into how much I really love them. So this is a book recommendation tag video that was started by a lady by the name of Steph. I think she's in the US, but I pulled out all the questions and I've got all the books here and I'm going to be sharing them with you. Okay, so we're gonna get into the first prompt. Okay. A book you tell people is your favorite. So now currently, this is my favorite book. Currently, this whole year in all the books that I've read this year, this is my favorite. I don't know if I read it this year or late last year. I don't even remember. This is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. The reason why I love this book so much is because it's written so, so well. It's lyrical. It's just beautiful. It's very, there's a lot of sim symbolism in the, in the writing as well. And I loved it so much. We follow Hamnet in the story. And Hamnet is the son to William Shakespeare and his wife Agnes, or actually pronounced as Agnes, and we follow Hamnet's story. Now, we know in the synopsis of the book at the back that Hamnet does not make it to the end of the week, but we do not know why and what happens. And so here we get a a story, a quiet story about Hamnet, his life, his family life, his relationship with his mother, and a big part of the reason why I love the book is because Shakespeare is just seen as a character in the book. He's kind of like a side character. The more important characters in this book is Agnes and uh, Hamnet. And Shakespeare is just known as the Latin tutor or the father or the son or anything dependent on who he's communicating with at that time. And I really loved how well it was written. The relationship that Hamnet had with his uh, twin sister Judith. I love this book. Yes, this book has made me cry. It made me cry three times at different points of the book as I was reading it, but I thought it was so incredibly well written, and that's why it was the woman, the woman, the winner for the Women's Prize Fiction in 2020. It was so so good. I love this book. I yo, yeah, I love, I love it. I love it so much. A book that is your guilty pleasure. I cannot even tell you. I love this book so much. I find myself going back to read one or two of the stories because just the, the it's a short story collection of The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Pilau. And it is so, so good. It's well written. It talks about the private lives of church ladies behind closed doors. So it's different short stories. I think there's about nine of them and they are all amazing in their own right. I loved this book. Oh my God. Oh my God. And uh, I find myself gravitating to it quite a lot. I'm such a big fan of this book and I really don't I feel like not many people speak about this book and, 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 and they should. They truly, truly should. I found this book at Bargain Books for 79 bucks. And when I bought it, it was 300 rand odd. So get it. 
get it it's so good it's so so good so good the next prompt is a book that everyone loved and you didn't you made a fool of death with your beauty by akweke emezi i love akweke emezi i love their works i have read uh three or four of their books at this point right now up until this moment and this one is my least favorite of them all i loved um uh what's this i've got it here i've got it here I'll show you. I've I've loved quite a few of the death of Vivek OG was my favorite by far, but this one I really did not like it. I did not like the storyline in this one we follow uh I don't even know her Faye. We follow Faye who has just lost her husband and now she's going through this time, this tumultuous time where she is grappling with the loss of her husband but also trying to move forward with her life. She's got a best friend by the name of Joy who is just everybody's best friend this is this is a best friend that you want to have okay she's she for me was by far the favorite character for me in this book but i did not like uh fei was a very unlikable character for me i questioned a lot of her decisions i was mad at her for a large part of the book um and the choices that she made in terms of the relationship that she had with an older man who also happened to be the father of a man that she was dating it was just it it for me it just didn't give what it gave for a lot of people um and i really didn't enjoy it i will keep it because i collect books however no it wasn't my favorite really wasn't my favorite i'm not even going to lie i hated that book <laughs> <laughs> a book that I read the fastest is definitely this one. This is A Man Called Uva by Frederick Bachman. Frederick Bachman again is also one of um definitely becoming one of my favorite authors. This book is just shy of 300 pages and I think I read it in in 2 days or less than 2 days and I loved it. I loved it so much and this one we follow a man called Uva and going through a really tough period in his life and he's recently just lost his wife. And the beginning of the book is quite hard to read because something does happen and I I I can't um share that because it would be a spoiler of the book but he's this grumpy old man who lives in this complex of of uh townhouses and all these young people are moving in and people from different ethnic backgrounds and all of that and he's just really grumpy and annoyed at how they are behaving or the things that they are not doing for the upkeep of the complex and where they live but he starts developing relationships with some of these people and he's got a really great relationship with this cat that just keeps coming back to his house each and every single day and it is so tragically sad but it is so heartwarming and just beautiful i cried as well when reading this one it is so heartwarming and just so beautiful to read it's one of the most enjoyable books that i've read in quite a long time and i read it very quickly because it literally just tugged at my heartstrings and because of that that's one of the big reasons why i feel like frederick bachman is going to be one of my favorite authors because I just absolutely devoured this book. It shows a lot about human relationships and dynamics between the young and the old and the relationships that they have. And it just shows how as much as he's got this grumpy exterior, he's actually just the sweetest, just such a nice man and with a good good heart and I just I loved this book. This is definitely a book I would reread. Definitely. If I want to share some tears or some do a little some, that's a book that I would reread. Definitely. A book that deserves okay. more hype. A Diary of Blood. Now, I know not everybody is going to read horrors or uh thrillers, but really this is not as <gasps> as people would think it is but it's a story of Dracula and his wife Constanta and you get to see how their relationship unfolds from the moment that Dracula turns her because he finds her you know just just 
two minutes from death, right? So he finds her like two minutes, just just two minutes, and he's like, you know what? I can give you a life that you want. I can give you a life you dreamed of. Let me do this, and you will be my wife, and this. And then he bites her, as vampires do, okay? And then she turns, and she becomes his wife. But then certain things start happening. So they live this amazing life, but Dracula, in and of himself, he's just really this misogynistic, he's just really not the nicest person. He really isn't the nicest person. And certain people come in and out of their marriage, and a lot of things happen in this book, but it's so good. It is so good. This book had me in its clutches. It had me in a chokehold when I read it. And I think it's one of the books that I, I, I took quite a short time to read as well. Um, I read it very, very quickly and I loved, loved. It was blurbed by Alexis Henderson and she said it's thrilling and seductive. And I believe Alexis Henderson because I loved The Year of the Witching, which is by Alexis Henderson. And I agree with her. This was so good. The romance in it, as much as there's so many troubling factors in it. And there is a page at the beginning of the book which talks about the triggers. There's gaslighting, blood and gore, self-harm, violence and murder and all that. But it's also a love story between ja Dracula and Constanta. And it's, it's, uh, it's written so well. Uh, written really, really well. Love a book that is becoming a movie or TV show. I don't have anything. Currently, right now, I don't have anything that I have read that I can actually say is becoming a TV show. So I can't answer that one. A book you have reread the most. I, I don't reread books. However, I have reread a couple of the short stories in the La Secret Lives of Church Ladies. So that is a, a, a book that I've kind of gone back to uh, regularly just to read a short story or two. I really enjoyed the short stories in that one. A book from a genre you typically don't read, Daughter of the Moon Goddess. Now, I typically do not read fantasy. However, I loved this book. This book had me, man. I was, I was just like, okay, okay, yes. Yes, okay, so we follow Xing Ying in this one, Xing, Xing Yin, and uh, she is born to the, 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 she is the daughter of the moon goddess who is her mother, but now they've been exiled into a certain part outside of the celestial kingdom, and Xing Ying, Xing Ying grows up not knowing why this has happened, but she knows that it's got something to do with her father. And as she grows up, she starts realizing that she's got special powers. She's got certain things about her, right? That she didn't know that she had. And you start seeing her, it's like a coming of age kind of thing where she wants to get her mother back into the celestial kingdom because she can see that her mother's not happy, you know, um, where she is right now and being banished uh, off to the moon and things like that. So she goes on a quest to try and fix all of that but it's also like a a love story as well there's a good character the prince and then there's a not so good character but he's so likable that you're just like i mean don't be with him but be with him but he's like great but he's not that great but he's like mm, mm, mm. but it, it's really good i enjoyed this quite uh, a lot and it's not a genre that i typically read i've got a, quite a few fantasy novels here um, but fantasy is not my first choice when it comes to the types of books that I read. But I really did enjoy Daughter of the Moon Goddess quite a lot. Loved it so much. Loved uh, it. A book that deserves all the hype it gets. I've got two. Both these books deserve all the hype that they get and even more. And then some. So this one is a nonfiction. This is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. Now, this is a story of her life and the relationship that she has with her partner, a very tumultuous relationship. Carmen Maria Machado is lesbian. So this is with a female partner. And there's a lot of descriptions of violence and abuse in same-sex relationships. But at the same time, this book has footnotes and things where you are sitting and it brings you back. It's almost like it's a book that you that reads. It's a nonfiction story on her life that reads like a fiction novel. It's amazing. It's amazing. And it's smart. And it had me, man. It had me. And it, it you see it as 
the certain chapters that come in as certain genres of books. So the dream house as a horror, the dream house as a fantasy, the dream house as an inner sanctum and all of that. I absolutely loved this so much. All the hype that it gets, every single person that I've watched online who's read this book absolutely loves it. And I agree with them. I'm just like, yes, that it's why, that it's correct. You have to, it's beautiful. Read, read that book, it's, it's quite good. And then of course, I, it needs no mentioning. A Quake Mezi, The Death of Vivek OG, where we follow the life of Vivek. It's also like a, um, a journey into becoming and finding your self-identity and finding your sexuality. In the story, we follow Vivek OG, who the book opens with Vivek having been dropped off at his mother's doorstep and he has died and his mother opens the door and her son is there and he has passed on and we then go back so we're in two different time spans of now and then and we watch him as he transitions and as he finds himself and he finds his identity his sexuality it is a great um exploration of a journey into being and a journey into becoming who you are and not you know not not being distracted or being uh, pulled away from that but becoming who you are and being unapologetic about it absolutely beautiful did i cry yes does vivek uh, it's um, it's amazing just read it just read it okay just read it a book that you usually recommend when asked to give a book recommendation. I love this book. I cannot tell you how much I love the story of Desiree and Stella. This is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, another book that is written so well and I think would be a perfect gift to somebody who reads because they will love uh, this book. So in this book, we follow two twins. That's why the face, you know, two twins. We follow Stella and Desiree and Stella and Desiree are born into a very small town, uh, a, a black Southern black community and they run away from this very small town at the age of 16 and when they get to the bigger town i think it's in in in, in georgia i think i'm not sure but when they get into this bigger town they take different trajectories of their life so they are so fair-skinned that they can pass as white they literally look like they can but one of the sisters chooses to stay black and the other one chooses to pass as white and now we follow uh this dual time span of these sisters and what happens to their lives and their children's lives and how these stories interweave and intermingle with one another and how they eventually make contact at a later stage through their children Children. It's beautiful and it's a great exploration of colorism, racism, um, and also looking at uh, terms of sexuality, gender, transgender. We have a transgender character in this book as well. I loved this book so much that it's one of those books that you feel so good after reading it. You physically feel like, oh my God. Yes, and it touches on very serious topics in the black community. And I'm talking about black community all over the world, not just in the States. Black African colorism is a real thing. And reading this is definitely something that I think uh, someone who loves to read will definitely enjoy. Everybody who's spoken about this book has loved it. And I understand why, because I love it too. Okay. That. Love that book. Love that book. Woo! Love that book. Okay. Um, a book that has your favorite character or characters. Need we say more when we talk about Shane and Jean Viev? Okay. So in this one, this is Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. This is a romance novel, but it's a romance novel that explores black love and explores trauma as well, but interweaves it in a romance novel. And it does it so well because it, it doesn't lean on the trauma, but it leans on black love and how even with 
trauma and even with all the things that may have happened growing up and all of that, they, they become such great people and the love that they have for each other is, um, magnifies all of that and I loved it so much so in this one we follow Jean Viev and Shane who are both writers so we are reading about writers in this book and it's so nice and they write books and Jean Viev writes sort of like these um sexy romance kind of vampire type novels right and then Shane is those writers that releases a book every couple of years but they're great like Oh, his books are amazing. And Jean Viev is the one who releases books regularly, right? But they're well known in their own right. And we follow them. And the book opens where Jean Viev is invited to come speak on a panel at a writer's convention, only to find the chain is going to be there. And so the book then changes trajectory and we start reading it in dual time span, where we see that chain and Jean Viev have actually known each other because one day, one week, when they were 16 years old or something along those lines, they spent one week together and that week changed the trajectory of their lives forever. And you find out that they were actually secretly writing to each other in their books. And so when they meet at this writer's convention, things kind of, yeah, and then you learn a little bit more about Shane, you learn about his history, his traumas, you learn about Jean Viev, her history, her traumas, um, but the love that they have. And Audrey, oh my God, Jean Viev's daughter is ah, ah, the epitome of a great kid. And it's such a good book. Ooh, it's only got, and if you don't like these steamy, you know, like just smutty, like too much happening sexually or whatever in romance books, this one has maybe like one or two scenes that are like, whoo, wow. But then outside of that, that's it. So yeah, and John Viev also struggles from migraines as well as somebody who gets headaches quite a lot and migraines every now and again. It's nice to actually read about a character who struggles with, you know, certain things that you can identify with as well. Um, but it doesn't make her a horrible person, you know. It, it's nice, man. It's good, man. And then I think uh, a book I wish I could live in, definitely. Definitely. Black girls must die exhausted. The women in these books, in, uh, in this the trilogy of books, are amazing. They're smart in their own right. They, they go through a lot, but they, they're the best of friends. And I love my girlfriends. And I would love to live in a book where I'm one of these characters and I'm living with my girlfriends. Ach, I'm, I'm spending time with my girlfriends, progressing professionally, truly just living great lives and also dealing with what's happening in their lives. I would love, love to live in a book like this. I, I'm a big fan. I'm really a big fan. That's it. A book that made you cry. I think I've mentioned the death of Vivek Oji, uh, a man called Uva and Hamnet. Oh my gosh. Made me cry. Made me cry. And a book that I wish I could read for the first time. Ocean Wong's On Earth We Are Briefly Gorgeous. This book, the tabs that I did in this book are wild because yes, he's a poet, so his writing is going to be exceptional. However, this is a book that centers around letters that a son is writing to his mother who cannot read. And in these letters, he writes about his childhood, how he grew up under her, his relationship with his grandmother, uh, who would call him little dog. <laughs> and, um, you know, his sexuality and discovering himself and, and, and becoming as well. Um, a lot on identity, a lot on the dynamic of relationships um, in between mothers and their children in the Vietnamese uh, culture. And uh, 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 I wish I could read it for the first time. I really wish I could read it for the first time. Um, I, this is the one book that I have highlighted so much in it. You would swear it was a textbook that I had to read for school or something like a novel that I'd need to read for, for, a, for, for a paper or something like that. But nope, it's 
it's that great. It really is that great. Um, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this book recommendation tag. I highly recommend any of the books in here, dependent on what genre of books you like to read. There's adult contemporary, there's nonfiction, there's horror, there's fantasy. I try to make it there's this uh, romance so i try to make it a little bit of everything that you could uh pick up you know there's african writers there's asian writers so i try to make it quite diverse for you i, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give it a like and a thumbs up i really would appreciate that it it goes a long way it truly does go a long way and yeah until the next video i'll see you guys very very soon until then bye